And the draft audit report, which ANN7 has in its possession, has now been gathering dust for the past nine months. Sources in Treasury told us that they do not expect it to be finalized or made public ever, given that the flaws or flawed project has the signature of Acting Chief Procurement Officer Skull Human all over it. But now that Human has been removed from his position, there's hope that the draft audit may be acted upon. Given that, my colleague Akio Rapetsi takes us through again who must act now. Thank you. Looking at who must act, uh, the first on the list is Dondo Mohajani, the Treasury Director General. Next up is Malusi Gigaba, the Finance Minister. We also have Eunice Karin, the Chairperson of the Standing Committee of Finance. Also on the list is Temba Gordi, the Chairperson of the Standing Committee on Public Accounts. It's back to you. And we're joined on the phone line by Mr. Shedrak Kaboy, ANC MP, and we also have Cecilia Russell, ANN7 Special Projects Editor, and Yamke Les Pengane is a black consciousness political activist, and uh, we have uh, Volshir Khegwane, National Black Business Council, uh, or in short, NBBC, as the, the president. We also have Mr. Shedrick, uh, or Mr. Shedrick mm -hmm. Boy. Uh, welcome back. Sorry, I, th I think earlier on we lost you. We've now gotten on to another phase, or you want to take it another layer uh, of what's going on at Treasury. And this is the 100 Suppliers Project, uh, where CIPS Africa was then employed, or rather appointed, to investigate all these contracts, perpetual contracts within Treasury. We've seen that Mr. Skalk Human was at the top of this, you know, this entire project. Do you have any confidence that now that he's been moved, that at least we can get to the bottom of this? You, you see, Cindy, why, where it's that you made the pronouncement that you've got the document that was beginning to be evidence of what he's been hiding. And Parliamentary Scorpa were going to have him on Tuesday to come and account about procurement and the work that he's been doing. And the fact that many black companies have not been given any business and what has been happening. Now he is removed. Now an African is being sent to us. And that's what makes me to be more suspicious about why did the DG take this decision now? Why didn't they allow Pascal to come on Tuesday so that you can engage him? and ask him all these questions. And from there on, you all go for an investigation to see how deep is the rot in, in, in Treasury. We were all saying last week that there is rot in Treasury and it has to be addressed. It can be that this, this individual that have co committed all this rot or part of it is corruption have suddenly been moved around. How much influence do they have on the decisions that are going to be taken into the future of, of the different projects? Mr. Van Skalk, we needed him to have come on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I've not yet spoken to the chairperson, but we knew that he's been confirmed as one of the people that are going to come and deliberate with us on the procurement processes that have been taking place. Because as I said last week, many black business people have lost a lot of business through their activities within Treasury. Mm -hmm. And they have been trying to centralize what this is what this particular report was beginning to expose that nothing was done, quite clearly the target here was black business for them not to benefit from the state. And the minister had admitted around that when he says many of the auditing companies that were there, there's only three that are quite black. And the rest, I mean, Deloitte and Touch, who just now shown that it, it's got a corrupt hand, and he has then said he's taking action against them. But there's still are not a lot, a lot of other companies that are white, that are dominant within Treasury. And we're going for that. So that's why I'm saying to my colleague who's in appropriation, let's put hands together and deepen the, I mean, like to focus on what has been going on in Treasury. Treasury has been running away and Treasury has been escaping accountability. Please stay on the line, Mr. Boy. Um, just, uh, Cecilia, I mean, we're not just talking about national treasury here. It also cascades into uh, the provincial, regional, etc., various departments of government where we've seen uh, for the same item, you know, there's different pricing depending on who you're selling it to within the government structure. And, and treasury has been overlooking this. Mm -hmm. So if you are saying to a taxpayer, hardworking at that single mom, the struggles that you're going through, um, and there's money somehow that is just willy-nilly being given away. I mean, in this case of CIPS Africa, 25 million given for the entire job where they'd only investigated 22 companies out of 
you know, what's that, the deficit of 78? It's, it's about one-fifth of, of what they should have done to get be, get be paid for. And it's only a year, hey? The contract was for one year, 25 million for one year, and they were supposed to target 100 companies. And it was not a, it, it's a good thing, you know, the, the, the project itself is a good thing. Um, the idea was a good thing, and it was announced with great fanfare, as everybody knows, by, by, by the then Minister Pravin Gordon, as uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment where our economy wasn't great. Um, the most worrying thing about all of these things, or, or, or about all of these stories, is that there seems to be no control in Treasury. These, Oh, these are good ideas that fall that fall by the wayside. I think that um, you know I've been also been involved in 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 SAA and and it would seem to me as though the same companies you know get this get contracts can charge what they like get get away with it. They're considered to be valued companies. They've 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 got a track a track record. They seem to have very good. Um, Credentials, and so they they, they continue all the time. But that's perpetuating the status quo, though, because if you're saying that the same companies are going to be preferred for the next 25 years, for as long as we exist, then where's the, you know, the 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 opportunity for other players to come in? Why are we even 23 years down the line? Exactly. Why the, have policies not been investigated or reformed before we are even got to where we are, um, uh, Mr. Dixon? Yeah, a number of things. One. Uh, I think the Competition Commission has cause for investigation here as to the length of these contracts. I think the length of these contracts could be thought to be reasonably uncompetitive. The fact that, uh, you know, that certain organizations are given one large contract, uh, in many cases it's a multinational corporation, when that contract could have been split up in smaller parts to many South African contractors mm -hmm. under one organization. For instance, if we look at the, IM, uh, uh, the, the, in, the integrated financial management system, that could have been handled by the, uh, the, the, the state IT, uh, IT agency, but under multiple South African companies, companies that are black-owned, competent, mm -hmm. and can do these things. It didn't need to go to Oracle. Mm -hmm. it, doesn't, it, it still today doesn't need to go to Oracle. And you know, the, the thing with overpricing is that oftentimes when these companies are so big, they, they, and with their competitors in their market, they price fix a lot of these things, especially when it's international companies tendering for the same thing. We've mm -hmm. seen this quite a lot with the Group 5 companies during the 2010 World Cup and the, and the tendering over there. We've seen this again uh, quite strongly uh, as, 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 as um, the Competition Commission uh, has pointed us to us in, 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 in certain markets. But mm. importantly here, and I think uh, where the real change needs to happen, is a look, is, is Treasury needs to be empowered to actually determine procurement policy. Because look, procurement policy in South Africa is not entirely determined by Treasury. Treasury is very limited in how it can but construct But there's now a centralized database, so pretty much... Yeah, yeah, yeah they, sure, they but kind this, of this, so Treasury has access to that database and can and various departments. Uh, so for instance, uh, the Department of... of, of, of of, uh, the Department of Health, for instance, has access to that database insofar as it needs yeah, service yeah. providers for health. But importantly here is that Treasury needs to be empowered to be, because Praveen Gordon has talk, spoken yeah. about this before. He said, I can't understand how a company will charge the state 35 rand for a light, uh, for a light bulb that's 18 rand at, at Pick and Pay. Uh, yeah. And they can't change these pricing uh, practices. Yeah, no, but I mean, you Praveen, know what's worrying as well, Roche, is the fact that you'll hear from SCOPA or the um, Oversight Committee saying it's the first time they've heard about it. And this thing has been going on since time and, and memorial, isn't it about time that on all the state-owned entities that whoever has a tender, I know there's an open tendering process, but particularly in Treasury, that there is a demand to know who uh, has got the tender without you having to go through hoops and, and you know, to find the information. Yeah, again. Look, we... Uh, uh, I would, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I would say, look, we, we have a problem. The tendering system was supposed to ideally benefit black business, uh, but it has failed uh, to benefit black mm -hmm. business. And in, it has failed to benefit small business, like small to medium enterprises, on their totality. Because, yeah, we have tender fixing, uh, and uh, where one big company comes there and is being preferred, and it actually gets offered uh, a job without any proper... Uh, tendering processes being followed uh, and any public finance management to be fair, at, uh, mm. uh, being followed. Yeah, but, but specifically mm. though, on the hundred suppliers within Treasury that have, have been on, on the 
uh, preferred supplier list for, for forever, essentially. And, you know, don't have to apply. The, the contracts are renewed. There's no stringent measures in, in, in checking whether they're competent or not. Uh, my problem is, should that not be made public? May I, may I say something about... Well, it should. Uh, I may think... I, may I, sorry no. to interrupt you. May mm. I just say something? That SIP's got this contract. They did not go through an open tender process. They put aside the open tender process. I'm not saying that that is, you know, corrupt or anything, but it just is another example of how it is that, um, you know, somehow in within Treasury there's a decision will go with this yeah. particular company, and that and that is what at, at essence. I know you're talking about the top 100 companies and how these contracts go on and on and on, but in terms of that one, uh, in terms of this contract. There was, no, there was no proper tendering process. They, they agreed amongst themselves that they would uh, find a service, a provider. They would put aside those kinds of things. And I think that one of the things that has come out from both the MPs that we've had on our, on our, on our panels today is that they are very unhappy with mm. these kinds of practices. And I think we should continue but to be But I don't know if they, yeah, no, no, just going back to the processes, especially in the supply chain management, um, if anything is above 300,000 or is it a million, I'm not sure, Vosha, you can correct me, it that depends. it has to go to, to tender. Can you yes. make a discretion and say a, a one-year project of 25 million rand doesn't have to, to go to tender? Well, legally, no, as far as we know the law. But the relationships that exist between officials in departments and companies that are corrupt. They corrupt each other, they work together and they share this money and they take these decisions outside of the law. These are guys who play golf together, who know each other, you know, and they usually it's, it's, it's a head of procurement and a friend. There's a lot of pressure in these organizations. If you go to SAA and see who's actually doing the procurement, it's a lot of white people. If you go to, the, if you see the racism inside our state-owned entities, how white people are still controlling engineers inside and, and harassing engineers within the, the, the organization. Go to any state-owned entity, look at ESCOM, and look at how many black people are owning the trucks that move coal. Look at any other contracts that exist within our government space, and you'll find that black people are perpetually subcontractors, and the master contracts are always going to big established white companies who have got billions. And whenever you get a contract of a billion or four billion or something that large, there is no single black company that collects that kind of money on any contract. And then subcontracts to other companies, white or black. It's always a white company at the top. So they do take these decisions at a golf course. They take these decisions over, over dinner and they talk about these things. And you always have these, these black procurement guys who have got absolutely no power in departments because they are being forced fed who they should give business to. That is all illegal and it needs to stop because we need black business to grow. We need to develop black business. And if you look at something like this, I've, I've got members who are specialists in, in IT. They never were involved or invited. They've been around for a very long time. They don't even know. A lot of them won't even know that this decision was taken behind closed doors at some point. Mm -hmm. They'll see in, in retrospect on the media that, oh, this happened at some point, but they were never invited to the table. And that is what's happening in our country. Yeah. All right, Mr. Imama, I hope you're still with us. In terms of making the 100 suppliers project uh, uh, public, it has been collecting dust until we, we got wind of it. Do you, do you think that uh, it is in the best interest or the uh, public interest uh, for these companies to be out, out there in the, the public discourse? Absolutely. I think, I mean, we're dealing with public uh, funds here, and I think we must uh, uh, release this information, and that is why we are calling for this inquiry, so that it can be made public. The public must be aware of what's happening with their funds. So I think that is not even open for discussion. That is they must. But let me also add that uh, the, 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 the Treasury, and I think I said that the last time when, when I was interviewed on the station that we have asked Treasury to provide us those integrated financial management support reports. Uh, we got, a, we got a, a, an email from them during the course of the week saying they are still not ready to give us the report. So I'm not sure if they're still trying to manipulate the report before they send it through to us because surely that information should have been on, on hand. But you know something also very interesting that came up in, in terms of this contract. And, I, and, and, and yesterday in the House, in questions to the President, on behalf of the NFP, I did allude to this with the President. 
that, you know, some of these big companies have got 30, 40, 50 year contracts, and that is a problem. So where is the actual interest of the small businessman, of the black businesses, if we want to continue? Because it appears we've made a decision we're going to continue doing business with these companies, these big companies. And, and, and so there is no interest actually in the small, yet we're talking about the tra- radical economic transformation. So I think we're not really not sincere about it. When you talk about the policies, they're very clear. Policies are directed by interests of individuals. Individuals based on their interests in, in, in major uh, in industries and, and financial institutions. I think. That is also what we are hearing now that is coming up very, very clear. This program that they were putting uh, at this, uh, and, and awarded to SIPs, I think you've just heard your, your colleague uh, allude there uh, to the fact that it wasn't even an open tender. So the question is, if it was not in an open tender and you've discussed it with a particular organization that's going to do it. So you've probably told them exactly what you want. And that is why we've chosen only to work with 22 companies and not the 100 allocated, but also spent the 25 million rand. So for me, I'm not sure whether, the, while the intention might have been good, but the process that was followed, it was premeditated as to exactly what they want to get back from those people. And that is what they got. So whether we really going to save any money or not, because... You've already decided you're going to continue dealing with these companies and nobody else. And, and, and so the time must come when we must stop this. And, 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 and that is why I think uh, this inquiry and together with the, uh, 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 the questions to the president yesterday, I'm hoping and my colleague that has just spoken, Honorable Boy, I think as organized uh, as, as the different structures, we need to come down and clamp down on Treasury. I don't think one single department or any monitoring and evaluation structure in the entire government has really done enough to deal with Treasury. Because we've always believed that Treasury was uh, cut above the rest, and they knew what they were doing. So this has come to us as a surprise, and like I said to you previously, I belong to SCOA, the Standing Committee on Appropriation. We've never known it. It was never, never divulged to us. And I find that departments don't generally call Treasury to deal with Treasury, but they call Treasury to deal with other departments. And that is the problem. So Treasury believed that they were bigger than the mall. So I think a lot needs to be done in terms of that. In terms of these uh, members and officials that have been moved, I have a concern, and I think I agree with my colleague. It just depends on why they were removed. And there's two folks. What my concern is that if these officials decide to resign tomorrow, like Kenneth Brown has done, then we seem to have a problem. Then the next route we must go is the criminal uh, uh, investigation and, and institute those proceedings against them. But on the other hand, in moving them from those positions, they help may, may, may help us because in some of the positions that they have, they were involved even in this contract, including the integrated financial management. So they may be able to influence what we might be able to pick up, like I'm saying. They up to today have not given us a report. So maybe it, it may help to a certain extent. But again, we need to look at that very, very seriously. But I can assure you one thing that from the, the National Freedom Party and I think as Parliament, we are going to demand an inquiry, a full investigation. We want this thing to be released to the public. Let them know exactly what is going on. And no matter who you are and what position you are, you hold, you must be held accountable. All right, Mr. Imam, we're going to have to leave it there in the interest of time. Honorable Mr. Boy, are we likely to see uh, MPs calling or um, subpoena, uh, sending subpoenas to even former ministers of finance, uh, in this case, um, uh, Praveen Kordan and his DG at the time? Yes, ma'am. We are going for them. We are going after them because somebody has to account. You must understand our interest is simple. All these Different people that are contributing are saying that the ordinary African child has not benefited within the processes after 23 years. The fact that it's state intervention versus, versus the multi-billion companies. The state must stand with those that are the poor of the poorest and defend them. And this is what we are saying to Treasury. Defend those. That's why the businesses that are there with the big companies must go to the original people, the indigenous of South Africa. And that's all that we are saying. And that's all we're pursuing. We're not worried about individuals. Those individuals that have crossed the path and those that have got their fingers in the purse, we're going to pursue them consistently. All right, Mr. Boy, thanks indeed for your time. And to our panelists, that's well, much appreciated. We almost forgot that it is a new chapter, a new season. It is a happy spring day. So hopefully things will change. We'll share that, uh, especially when it comes to economic inclusion.
policies will reform uh, for all to benefit. You, we, you we, hope so. we hope so. We really do hope so. Um, I think the work is being done. I think work is being done, but not <laughs> enough is being done. I'm also surprised that um, the Auditor General never picked this up for so many years and so many billions that it has to come out through a media organization. So what have they been auditing all these years and what, what have been these clean audits coming from? Mm -hmm. So that has to be investigated as well. Absolutely. I'm mm -hmm. sure we'll know by next week uh, further developments. But you at home, thanks indeed for staying with us and our mm -hmm. panelists. Much appreciated as well. We'll see you again on Monday. For myself and the technical crew, be abundantly blessed. Cheers for now.